Greetings, everybody. Learning as a hobby here. Uh, I wanted to go over section 1.3 in Stillwell, John Stillwell's Mathematics and its history book. Um, it's, I know it's been a while since I posted a video, um, but that's because I've been working on the Patreon page a lot, which uh, is coming along really nicely. I just finished chapter three uh, in the Blitzer Elementary Algebra book. Uh, if you're interested in, in prereq learning prerequisite material for the stuff that I'm doing on the channel here, uh, please do go uh, take a look at the Patreon page. I'll put a link to the uh, the page down in the description bar. Uh, it is only $5 a month. So if you want to support the channel in that way, it's sort of like you'd be buying me a cup of coffee once a month. Uh, and in return, you'd be getting all of that supplementary material for, uh, you know, well, prerequisite material. So, so we're going to on that channel, just I've said it in videos before, but <clears throat> I'm going over uh, elementary algebra, then we're going to do pre-calculus, then single variable calculus, discrete math, you know, multivariable calculus, and so on and so on. Statistics, elementary statistics. So all of those, you know, if you're rusty on all any of those prerequisite subjects, then uh, you'll have a place to brush up on that stuff by joining the Patreon. Okay, so let me get to, to Stillwell now and stop uh, the commercial here. So uh, I went over section 1.1 and 1.2 a while back, which you can see on the channel. There's a playlist for this book on the channel, um, but uh, I haven't gotten around until now to uh, doing the next section. So we're gonna do section 1.3. Uh, hopefully I can finish up chapter one actually in this book this week because there's not that much uh, left in chapter one. There's, I think there's like one or two more sections. Um, so after this video, I'll, I'll post the, the exercise sets because I've already done those as well. Let me bring up the notes. Uh, I should also say um, from chap section 1.1 and 1.3, I also mentioned that I was going to uh, make a video on some of the references that he that Stillwell uses in um, in this section 1.1, 1.2, mainly the Vanderwarden book, and I, I just haven't gotten around to that, but I will be making a video on that at some point so but anyway let's let's get to section 1.3 so continuing with continuing with the theme of Pythagorean triples. If A, B, and C are the lengths of a right triangle, we know from previous sections that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, if we are, are if we're interested in finding integer solutions to an equation like that, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, it's equivalent to finding rational points on the unit circle. Since if z is not zero, we can divide everything by z squared, which gives us the equivalent equation x over z squared plus y over z squared equals one. Okay, and we can, you know, obviously x over z is a, and y over z is a uh, pair, a rational uh, solution, a rational pair of coordinates uh, that will lie on the unit circle because that's the equation of the unit circle. Uh, these types of problems are called Diophanty, named after Diophantus, whose work involved uh, finding rational solutions to equations. Uh, actually, today in number theory, Diophanty equations don't really refer to equations uh, with rational solutions. It refers to uh, in, um, finding equations, sorry, finding solutions of equations, uh, specifically inter integer solutions rather than rational ones. Um, and Diophantus is one of the references that Stillwell uses, and I have uh, Diophantus's book, uh, which we may be referencing, you know, later on down the line, uh, and I have that as a reference so I can, you know, go through it um, uh, if we need to. But anyway, uh, the trick to uh, solving problems like this, uh, which is called the chord tangent method of solution, which was used by Diophantus, which was forgotten and then later rediscovered by Fermat and Newton in the 17th century, uh, is to begin with an obvious trivial solution. So an, an obvious, first you find an obvious solution, and then you use that to find other solutions. And just to give an example of that procedure, we're going to find uh, formulas for finding rational points on the unit circle. So from your previous math experience, you should know that the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. So if you look at the picture here, there is an obvious solution to this equation. For example, if x is minus one and y is zero, that's the solution, right? Because minus one squared plus zero squared is equal to one. If you draw a line um, 
that has slo uh, rational slope t, then uh, you know, and that passes through the point q, um, then the equation of that line will look like y equals t times x plus one. If you take that value for y, and you plug it in to the equation for the unit circle, you get this quadratic equation here. And we know that this quadratic equation has a rational solution um, because one, uh, sorry, there should be a plus one here. Sorry, there's a typo. Um, so let me just fix this real quick. So there should be x plus one, right? Because what, you know, negative one is a solution to that equation, right? So x plus, this should factor into x plus one times x plus some other number equals zero. Uh, because this solution is rational, that means that this solution has to be rational. So we know that we have another rational factor. In fact, we can find what the number is equal to, or a formula for it, for it in terms of t, the which is the slope of the line. Um, using the quadratic formula. So we want the, not the negative uh, solution, but the positive one, which we can uh, find by using the quadratic formula. So you can solve this, solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So X is equal to negative two T squared plus, uh, and notice that, you know, you usually get plus or minus, but I'm ignoring the negative version because we already know that the, the negative solution is minus one. So negative 2t squared plus square root 4t to the 4 minus 4 times 1 plus t squared times t squared minus 1 all over 2 times 1 plus t squared. And you can simplify the expression underneath the radical. Um, when you do that, notice that you end up with just square root of 4, which is 2. So we get this uh, expression down here negative 2t squared plus 2 over 2 times 1 plus t squared. And you can factor out the common factors of 2 and cancel them. And you get that x has to be equal to this expression here, 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. Notice this is rational. <clears throat> it's rational because t is rational. So uh, and a quotient of rational numbers is rational. OK, and then we can plug this into the equation of the line for x, uh, and that'll let us solve for t, uh, sorry, that'll let us solve for y, rather. Uh, y is equal to t times 1 minus t squared over t 1 plus t squared plus 1. When you simplify that, you get 2t over 1 plus t squared. Okay, again, notice that that's rational because t is rational. All right, so therefore, we get our rational point on the unit circle. Okay. That the coordinates here are rational. So for any line that has rational slope that passes through the, the point negative one comma zero, you get a rational point on the unit circle. And that's the an example of the, the chord tangent method that um, Stiller refers to that was used by Diophantus, which I believe he's going to explore later on down the line in the book. Uh, that's that's it. That's one point section one point three. It's a relatively short section. Uh, so let me stop the screen share. Uh, like I said, I'll try and finish up chapter one in the in the, the Stillwell book this week because I think like, you know what. Let me just double check and make sure. I think there's only like one or two sections left in here in chapter one. Um, Sorry, let me look at 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Yeah, there's actually three three short sections left. So I might actually do those all, all three of those in one video. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to do the exercise set for uh, for this section next. So I'll post that right after I post the video for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please do take a look at the Patreon. Like I said, I'll put a link to it down in the description bar. There's also a link to it in the uh, channel banner. Uh, if you look on the, the channel page, um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep learning until that time.